Welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at Pyramid Head and some of the perks that I recommend on him. Now I've got a lot of people been asking recently, hey, what do you recommend on him, Goose? Now as you can see, I've only got him at level 1 Prestige 2 at the moment, therefore I'm currently in a KYF, or also known as a custom game, where I can invite my friends to play. That's why you guys can see all the perks. Now that that has been established, what would work better on this killer? Well, if you don't understand how his ability works, it's pretty much a, a double-edged sword. Wait, it is a double-edged sword. And, okay, it's pretty much two abilities in one, alright? He can hold his right mouse button and he can drag his sword along the ground. Or sorry, he can hold control. It's one of the two. I think it's control. And he can drag along a sword on the ground. It'll create like a barbed wire effect. Any survivor that walks through it will have a new status effect underneath them, which you're going to be able to see in the bottom left-hand side of the screen. If Pyramid Head were to down a survivor that currently has this status effect, he can then put his sword through the survivor's chest, they will then sink into the ground, and they will be trapped inside a cage. Now, let me quickly explain what a cage is. It's basically, you send a survivor to a random location on the map that is predetermined when you put the cage on them, and it, the aura will always be revealed to teammates. Therefore, if you have a blindness add-on, it will not affect it at all. So just keep that not a blindness add-on, like things like third seal. It will not affect it. I'm pretty sure knockout, a slug will still be able to see through third seal. Uh, I mean, still see regardless, even though they're on the ground. Just because that's the way the mechanic is. Much like if you slug a guy with knockout and you're a pig and he has a helmet on his head where he, where he needs to go for the helmet to be off. Unless it was the ultra rare offering for the pig, the number two. Okay, let's take uh, into effect. When you put somebody in the cage, it counts as a hooking stage. It will still take them 60 seconds to hit their struggle, and then after they hit their struggle, they will then have 60 seconds before they die. Much like the same equivalent time for a timer. If you were to send somebody to a cage, and then put somebody on a hook, the same player at a later point, it'll still count as if you've already hooked them. That being said, it's just like Freddy Krueger and understanding BT. If you imprison a survivor in the cage, Keep in mind the prerequisite is they have to walk over this this um, barbed wire on the ground. If you send them there and they have decisive strike, they will not be able to use it because being in the cage is not like being on the hook. Even though it still does the same status effect, it does not, you know, by hitting struggle, it does not count as hooking a survivor. Therefore, it's an instant counter to the following perks. It's an instant counter to barbecue and chili if the killer uses it for himself, which is bad. The killer will not get Pop Goes the Weasel, which is also bad. The killer will not get Devour Hope. Yet again, bad. Let's look at the positives. Survivors will not be able to use Decisive Strike. Survivors will not be able to have 100% success rate. They cannot escape a cage, therefore they can't attempt to get out, so they can't use Deliverance. They can't use Slippery Meat. They can't use Borrowed Time to save somebody from a cage. These are all very important things to keep in mind. Therefore, you're countering a lot of on-meta perks if you send somebody to the cage. If you are to hook a survivor and then send him to the cage, you can then... He will then hit struggle. Now there's one further more part I want to point out. If a survivor has been caged twice, or a survivor has been hooked twice, and then is under the effect of barbed wire, and you down them, you can then instantly mori them on the spot, providing they're under the effect of the barbed wire furthermore. So you notice how important it is right now to have the barbed wire active, right? The second part of his ability, that was righteous, uh, as you can see, the, the, right to, the rights of justice, or judgment, sorry. There we go. The next one we're looking at is Punishment of the Damned. Now, what does this do? Basically, the killer will be able to pick up his sword and slam it in the ground. It'll then do a chain attack in front of him. This being said, it will slow him down if he fully pulls the sword up, but he can toggle it, just like you'd see a Demogorgon try and bait you with the shred to get you to drop the pallet and then go for the M1 if he had lust. This killer can do the same thing, except he can hit you through the pallet. It, it's pretty much a large amount of debris comes out of the ground and hits in the direction straight in front. So this being, my, you have to be mindful of this, right? So the way the killer should be playing when he's trying to outplay a survivor will be he'll be activating his ability, he'll be pulling the sword up, and then he'll be baiting it as if he was going to sta slam it into the ground to see if a survivor throws a pallet or continues to run. If they continue to run, he walks through and M's one them. If they drop the pallet, he catches them in animation. Much like a huntress trying to bait a hatchet, except there's no form of bait for the executioner. Therefore, deeming him more superior at catching on these jungle gyms than the average killer. However, he's very tall, as you can see, with the pyramid on his head. That being said, he can still mind game, he can still moonwalk, he still moves at 115% movement speed, he still applies by the basic laws of Dead by Daylight, having to break pallets, he can't phase around, he can't blink through. 
He can, however, be very strong. If you are to down a survivor who does not have barbed wire on them, unlike a plague that can then vomit on a survivor on the ground or vomit on a survivor on the hook, you have to hook them. You cannot drag the barbed wire through them to add the effect to then take them there. Keep that in mind as well. Now, you noticed a lot of things I pointed out. Even agitation won't be able to take effect when taking them to the cage because you can just put them in the cage. Now, if you want to put a survivor in the cage, you're still going to want generator stability. You're still going to want information. Now, right away, you can already see I, the two perks that I highly recommend on this killer are two of my favorite perks in Dead by Daylight that go hand in hand together for time management and for information. We have Surge and we have Surveillance. What do these perks do? Surge is basically an explosion that happens around the killer within 32 meters when he downs a survivor. Any generator that has been worked on in that area will get an 8% regression penalty to what is completed on the generator. Now, a common mistake that people do not know is if a survivor is working on a generator with Ruin and you were to just down another survivor within 32 meters. It's not within your heartbeat, therefore Michael Myers can run Surge with an 8 meter heartbeat with modern abuse and then still have Surge activate at 32 meters. I want to point that out. If you were to down one of those survivors and the other guy's working on Ruin, he will, the explosion will happen and it will regress 8%. He can then keep applying pressure to the gen as if he missed a skill check. Keeping this in mind, if a survivor is off a generator and it is currently being regressed with Ruin, and you down a survivor, that generator will still explode and regress. I know it's commonly misunderstood that people think that generator will not regress, but it does regress there. So do keep that in mind too. So, uh, surveillance is basically a god tier perk for information. When a generator is regressed by either me using brutal strength or just breaking a generator with the kick animation or through surge it'll permanently glow white until a survivor touches it when a survivor touches it it will go a yellowy green shade for 16 seconds letting me know anybody working on the generator will make a louder noise within eight meters which is very hard to determine as a survivor so if i just downed a guy I can send him away to a cage and look at all the gens around me. No gens are lit. I'll just rotate through the board and get pressure towards somebody else. Therefore, there's no downtime. There's no stall. A lot of people undervalue how powerful agitation is with the time management it saves. This killer has built-in agitation to the next level if you can constantly send people away. So just keep that in mind too. The thing here is he lacklustres catching at jungle gyms if you do not know how to toggle your ability. Now, a really good perk for you training and learning how to use your... Uh, was it rights of... No, it was something of the damned. Sorry, I'm still learning the words. Your punishment of the damned. A really good way to learn how to use this will be this perk right here, which is called I'm All Ears. I'm All Ears when a survivor at, does a rush animation, whether that be vaulting over a window or vaulting over a pallet, they're always going to be revealed to you for six seconds. Therefore, you can kind of walk back and you can hit them through the wall. Keep in mind that your ability travels through walls and through pallets, and you can add double range add-ons if you were to so feel inclined and choose to run them. This being said, I personally don't like that. I wouldn't feel that would be a necessary perk for being able to play this killer. I would, however, go for a perk to speed up the game in my favor in terms of brutal strength or enduring. Because I feel pretty comfortable using this killer's ability. I mean, sometimes I make an absolute gumball play, but still... I would look at Brutal Strength. Some of you will disagree with Brutal Strength and I completely understand. Now, why would you disagree with it? Well, I literally just told you, if you understand how to use the ability, you can pull up the sword, bait it, and then hit a guy through the pa pallet. You can do that, and then you can catch him. But this is going to allow you to get through these breakable doors, which are riddled on the new map and on a few other maps. If we're going to be looking at the, um, the map that just came out with Zarina... Uh, the saloon, it's riddled with it too. So this perk will come into great use. It does still stack with surveillance, even though you have surge. It, yet again, is going to help you with time management. Keeping in mind, the thing you're lacking here is gen stability at the start of the trial. You could realistically go corrupt intervention, and you could go discordance. You could go corrupt intervention. I wouldn't recommend thrilling tremor personally in a situation like this. You could go modern abuse if you feel you want to get closer to a survivor. It might even be able to help you land some of your shots. But the thing is, this killer has such an open door experience. His three teachable perks he comes with, unfortunately, do not help him a lot. And they don't help many of the other killers in the game as well. You could run this perk here, Trail of Torment, which is when you regress a generator by using the kick animation, therefore not surge in surveillance. You can then walk with no heartbeat. 
keeping in mind, if you were to run that on a loud killer like Demogorgon or Oni, you'd still be able to hear the footsteps because it does not silence the footsteps. Personally, I wouldn't take that, and I would lean towards more something like Whispers, believe it or not. That also being said, if you can keep multiple targets injured, that'll benefit you a lot. Sloppy Butcher would be nice too, but keep in mind Sloppy Butcher will not work off the on-hit effect of your M2 ability with your Sword of the Damned being slammed into the ground. It'll only work off an M1. Now, all in all, you can realistically run whatever two perks you want here. You can even go Enduring Spirit Sphere if you want, because you're going to be breaking a lot of Palace in the Trial. You can even go Bamboozled. The door is your option. Only two perks I recommend is this is going to give you information of what generators people are on. This is going to give you regression and stability. Sometimes that's not enough for people. you got to keep in mind, he is a double-edged sword because you cannot use barbecue and chili for the information. You, ca you can use Thrilling Tremor. You can pick somebody up as a slug and then look on Thrilling Tremor, drop them, and then send them with a sword, but it is a bit of time-consuming. I did a bit of that in the PTB, but it really just comes down to depending on how you play. Instant downs like Devour Hope, Corner Ground, and Noed will not work on your on-hit effect, but they will obviously work on your M1s as well. Realistically, you could even look at running Nemesis play with your food on this killer, but I wouldn't recommend it as well based on the fact his M2 is classified as a lethal hit. You could do Infectious Fright and send somebody to another world and then know where you're going because you have stability on your gens. Infectious Fright would work hand in hand with these as well. That way you see regression on the gens, you know if anyone's lurking around, and then you can move on straight away. But the issue here is you have nothing at the beginning of the trial to be able to help you out in terms of stopping people from split pressuring and gen rushing you. And Corrupt Intervention I found has helped me a lot in those kind of scenarios and situations. Anyways, guys, that is just a little bit more of an in-depth look on the new killer just out of the PTB on the live servers now, the Executioner. Guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button for more educational Survivor content or pop into the live streams where I play DVD five days a week, both killer and Survivor content. It'd be nice to see you in there. If you think you know everything about DVD, you can help me teach you people that don't. Anyways, guys, have a wonderful rest of your day. Stay safe, and I'll see you in the fog. Thank you.